everyone. I'm Jennifer Apodaca, Director of Student Services, and I'm here with our district nurses, Elizabeth Feistamel and Debbie Brown, to talk with you about uh, some health service policy revisions that we're recommending right now. Our goal in health services is to review the student health-related district policies and procedures approximately every five years to ensure that they remain relevant and up-to-date. And we most recently did this mass review in 2018 the revisions that we're bringing to you today are not substantive. They reflect updated wording and current terminology in order to provide clarification. So here to walk you through those changes are our district nurses, Elizabeth Feistamel and Debbie Brown. And we recommend for this screencast that you have the tracked changes for each of the policies or procedures available to you um, to go through as we go through this screencast. We'll share a slide about each policy and presentation and you can pause and then take a look at your documents and then unpause the video and we'll move on to the next, um, to the next policy. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Elizabeth to talk about language changes. Great, thank you. So first we took a look across all of our health services related policies to make sure we are using consistent terminology. So one area that we looked at is finding all the places we had parent, guardian listed different ways and change that all consistently to parent caregiver. The only place we specifically left legal guardian is in the immunization waiver section because that does require a legal guardian signature. We also looked to make sure all the titles of positions were correct. So we did have healthcare assistant in some places. We made that um, consistent across policies to health assistant, which reflects their current job title. And we also had physician, doctor, healthcare provider written in different ways. So we made sure that that was consistent across the board to healthcare practitioner. So those are some changes you'll see throughout the different policies that we made just to wording to ensure that consistency. For policy JHC and procedure JHCR, which is the emergency health services policy, there were no other significant changes made other than those wording updates I just went through. For policy JHCA, physical examinations of students, there were also no other changes made besides those wording updates. The next policy we looked at was JHCB and JHCBR, which is student immunizations. For the policy itself, the only additional change made was to include a reference to an existing state statute about exclusion. Under the procedures, uh, we added information in two sections. The first one was under section 2A2. We added wording that a parent or guardian can submit an immunization record in addition to just filling out our school form. This reflects current practice as most families will submit an immunization record from the clinic. The other change was under 2E. And in this part, we um, didn't really have any change in our practice or policy. Wisconsin law has required exclusion for students in grades kindergarten through five that were behind schedule on immunizations if the district was not in 99% compliance in immunizations for the previous school year. We just expanded this, this section to clarify what and for how long exclusion is. So again, this was no change in our policy or practice, just an expansion to kind of explain a little bit more about exclusion. Then the other policy we looked at was JHCC and JHCCR, communicable diseases. And as reference, we last looked at all of our policies in 2018. I think this one was probably the, the most interesting to look at and reflect on after going through the COVID pandemic. And overall, the policy stayed um, very similar. There are a couple of additions that we did make though. In the policy itself, in the fourth paragraph, we added the following sentence. In some situations, exposure to or close contact with the source of a communicable disease may be sufficient to result in temporary exclusion. We probably all remember, and some of us probably personally experienced this with COVID during the first year and a half, um, that if you were identified as a close contact to somebody with COVID, that you would have to quarantine. So while we think of this in terms of COVID, it can happen with other communicable diseases as well. For example, three weeks ago, there was a case of measles in Dane County. If that case had been associated with our schools and had been in that school, um, individuals that are not fully immunized against measles may have to quarantine for public health guidelines. So this is something that can happen with different communicable diseases and we just want to make sure it was reflected in policy. In the procedures, JHCC-R, there are two additions. Um, under section 1E, we added the point about informing parents and caregivers about the standards of when to keep children home when they are sick. 
This information is included annually in our student handbook and is also available on the district website. The next section is section 2G, and there we added language that in a public health emergency, procedures or expectations from public health may supplement or supersede our district policy. The last policy that we wanted to talk about today is JH, Student Health and Welfare. This is actually a policy that we propose retiring. It's really a general statement of just the district and board stance on the health and welfare of the student body. These concepts are included throughout all the other health services related policies. And so we propose retiring this policy at this time. Thank you, Elizabeth and Debbie for walking us through the changes that we're bringing forward to our district health related policies this year. Just as a reminder, this is something that we try to do on a whole scale review every five years, but as more critical changes come up, we make those changes in a timely fashion as well. Uh, this is just our routine review to make sure that our language and our content is what we want it to be across all of our policies. So again, the revisions reflect updated wording and current terminology, some minor clarifications, and we're recommending one policy retirement at this time. Thank you so much for your attention to this screencast. If you have any questions prior to taking action at the board meeting, please reach out to Elizabeth and Debbie at the contact information on the slide so that they can answer your questions for you prior to the board meeting. Thank you so much for your attention to this topic. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you with any questions.